2002, I, Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya, dreamed I saw exploding stars and missiles coming to America. Pray Yahweh will make them duds where you live before it's too late. Also, Prophecy 66, quite unexpected as I type this out, entitled Prophecy 66. Blow the trumpet and warn, Yahshua is not coming back for the church, but for his bride. Titus 2, 13, 14. Look up, Americans. Humble, repent. Pray for Yahweh's judgment to be delayed. The missiles will soon be coming, and only prayer or fasting can make them duds or delay them. Please take this prophetic dream seriously before it's too late. Yahweh speaks in dreams and visions as well as prophecies. Please copy and pass this to others as well as other ministry sites. No one can say they weren't warned. Pray for wisdom of Yahweh, for President Bush and the two-star generals, and all those in government, including Colin Powell. Now is not the time to play politics. Pray while we still have the freedom to pray. I had a dream with the interpretation, and I saw exploding stars and missiles coming to America. Pray Yahweh will make them duds where you live, as well as all over America. This is my prophetic dream of warning. I want you to understand the circumstances that I fell asleep, so you will know I was not watching too much CNN before sleep. December 7th was our ninth month wedding anniversary. We were told by Yahweh to celebrate it monthly, not only yearly. This is what we had done. It was about 2 o'clock a.m. before we fell asleep, lovingly, full of peace in each other's arms. I am not thinking of any terrorist attack before my sleep. Having said this, I will relate the dream to you. My husband, Apostle Nicomaya, and I were outside, looking at the stars facing the east. I was awestruck how beautiful the stars looked that night. The sky looked like a black velvet canvas, and the stars were so bright, big, and beautiful. I said, look, darling, look at the stars. I've never seen them so bright and beautiful. And he said, yes, he had seen skies like this before in Minnesota. We got down on our knees and started praying and praising Yahweh and Yahshua for creating such beauty. We also were thanking God Yahweh for the blessing and protection we have known in America. Note, we did not have coats on and it was not snow we were kneeling on, but where we are living now, we have only had snow one time and the snow has melted and the weather is not that cold. The next thing I saw in my dream is hard to explain. As I looked up praying, I saw what looked like an exploding star. One star exploded, first with lights all around it in various colors. I kept praying, for I didn't know what this was. As I showed my husband the exploding star, he continued praying with me and praising Yahweh for his protection and blessings and the beauty God Yahweh created. I looked up, and no longer were we alone, for people started watching us pray and praising Yahweh and Yahshua. Multitudes of people started watching the skies with us. Five women knelt beside us and joined with us praying and praising Yahweh and Yahshua for protection. These were our first friends that joined in the dream, joining hands with us. Multitudes of others just stood back and watched us. Some mocked us. I watched the sky and I thought the exploding star wouldn't happen again. Much to my amazement, another exploding star, then another. We kept on praying and more people joined on our knees with us and prayed. There were at least four exploding stars, some bigger than the others. I realized then the people joining us were for us, and those that refused to pray with us and help us intercede for America were against us. I was puzzled what the exploding stars mean. I said to my husband, strange, because this isn't fireworks, for it's not the 4th of July. Then I saw what looked like a colorful streak in the sky, rapidly making a very long trail in the sky. I heard a loud sound like something hitting the ground. When we ran to see what hit the ground, there were people all around, a big dark gray missile that was partly embedded in the ground with two reddish fins on each side sticking out of the ground. People were frightened, but as we approached it praying, we saw a miracle. It was a missile that did not explode. Praise Yahweh on Yahshua. The missile in the ground was a dud. Oh, we realized then it was our prayers that saved us. Only Yahweh on Yahshua could have prevented what was the explode to be a missile dud. People then started following us and wanted to go wherever we went, for they knew they would be safe. If they would join with us in prayer, we were each other's prayer covering. My husband and I knew we would be leaving the place we were residing, 
and believed in faith for our safety because surely it would have been dangerous for the stars were still exploding in the sky when we looked at it. We needed provisions for the trip. We went into the crowded store with people in long lines. People were following us, curious at what we would do next, for they knew the missiles would be duds wherever we went. This was our promise from Yahweh and Yahshua, and we would be protected and provided for. I commented to my husband that I know all those that were following us into the store would be protected and provided for. We took a step, and the people followed, taking steps right behind us. The people already in the store were greedy and only thinking of themselves, pushing and shoving each other. All of us who walked in the store together cared about each other's needs. The people already in the store recognized me as a person that pointed out the exploding stars and who prayed and warned. Some liked me in the store and others did not. Some people either ignored me or were rude and hateful. As I was standing in line, people gave me cuts in front of them so I could buy provisions quicker. I had picked up some items and held them in my hands. All were food items, and one was a big bag of potato chips. As I got to the front of the line and the clerk was ringing up my total, which was a small amount, I reached into my pocket and realized I had no cash. Only a $700 money order and paid to the order was blank. Note if anyone knows why this amount and why it was blank. I don't have the discernment yet. Please email me if you get the revelation from the Ruach also called the Holy Spirit. I prayed the clerk would have enough money in the cash drawer to cash it. Then I said a quick prayer she would cash it. I told her this is all I have. Do you have enough money in the cash drawer? It was mid-afternoon and I prayed she did, seeing the number of customers she had that day. She looked and she did have enough. She asked for my ID and I realized my husband had my wallet and he was in the back of the store waiting in line for people. Did not get him cuts in line, only me. And I said, please wait, I have to get my driver's license for my husband. The people that didn't like me were angry that I held up the line. Others understood. I went to the back of the store and I got the ID for my husband and I went back to the clerk. She looked at my ID and said she doesn't normally do this, but she recognized who I was and she rang up the small total and gave me back cash for the money order. I told her I was very grateful. We left the store with people following us wherever we went. They knew they would be provided for and safe. The end of the dream. Interpretation of the dream. When I awoke at 10.30 a.m. Sunday morning, I told my husband the dream. We then prayed together. We are the first to pray about the, about the exploding stars. I saw the exploding stars first in the dream and pointed them out to my husband. And we prayed in the dream. And now we prayed when we were awake. I said, I don't understand what the exploding star means. Yahweh told me immediately as soon as I spoke these words, What does your flag have on it? I said, Stars. Yahweh said, What do the stars represent? I said, States. Yahweh said, Pray that the missiles that will hit the states, which are the number of exploding stars you've seen in the dream, will be duds. Yahweh also said to Prophecy 66, Blow the trumpet and warn. Yahshua is not coming for the church but for his bride. Prophecy 66 Blow the trumpet and warn. Yahshua is not coming for the church, but for his bride. Note. This prophecy starts out with a command to tell Jim Brantlett of Five Doves Ministry. Will all those reading this and hearing this please get this dream and prophecy to Jim, for I don't know if he will receive the email I send to him. Please help me to obey. Never was I given a command to tell a particular person a prophecy and ask their help in getting the message out. I am obeying now. Whether Jim will obey and receive this prophetic warning, only time will tell. Yahweh will at least send it to him and others. Please send me email and let me know you have blessed me in this way. Thank you. Prophecy 66 Blow the trumpet and warn. Yahshua is not coming for the church, but for his bride. 12802 Given to Apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya. Tell Jim Bramlett of Five Doves Ministry. Post this dream and prophecy and warn everyone that will listen, for judgment is coming to America. 
Those that join with you and pray will be spared, and the missiles will only be duds. It will not harm them. The people that are a blessing to you, Yahweh and Yahshua will bless. The people that curse and mock the message I have given you to warn before it is too late, Yahweh and Yahshua will see that these will go without food or shelter, and the missiles will come where they live, and the missiles will not be duds. I have sent you forth for years now, and send you forth as my Elijah of new to the widows of Zarephath in America and around the world. And they knew not they were destitute, for the time had not come, but now it will soon be upon them. The ones in the store that did not like you and did not pray with you nor help you, instead mock the messages I have given you, will be those that will suffer when the evil befalls this earth in a way it has not been shown before. Only those with spiritual eyes and ears will even hear you warning the troops on a wall. I have told you to assemble. Do not concern yourself with those that have rebelled against the truth. I have had you speak forth. Do not be concerned how many will stop supporting you financially. For I shall bless those that bless you and curse those that have cursed you. And rise up others to be a help to you and not a hindrance. This ministry is not named after a man or a woman, but rather brings Yahweh the glory even in the name. This ministry has not spoken forth words for itching ears, but rather for holy ears that want to be pleasing and obedient unto Yahweh as Enoch and Elijah of old walked. So shall those that listen and obey and those pleasing Yahweh and shall be called Yahshua's bride. I, Yahweh, I'm not sending my son to catch away the churches, but rather the bride of Yahshua, who is the first fruits. There are requirements to be Yahshua's bride. I, Yahweh, have told you audibly, Yahshua is not coming for a disobedient bride. Remember the five wise virgins with oil in their lamps? Remember the five foolish ones disobeyed. Both were warned, the bridegroom cometh. Both waited. The bride will receive the glorified bodies, and hardly will the world take notice as she is caught away and prepared with marching orders how to help the guests and protect the guests who were not fit to be called a bride. For the guests did not go the extra miles it takes in obedience and holiness, forsaking the things of this world for the sake of the kingdom of Yahweh. The guests love the bridegroom, but not enough to forsake the heathen ways and holiday seasons including the churches of Babylon and a man-made spiritual laws. The guests knew who Jesus is, but refused to learn more about who Yahshua is, the king of the Jews, your Jewish high priest, who obeyed and kept the Jewish high holy days and feasts. The guests insisted on staying comfortable in a routine, partaking in fellowships that fed them stale crumbs of bread instead of fresh manna from heaven. The bride of Yahshua is concerned with more than just themselves, but work to bring others to the truth of the kingdom of heaven. The bride of Yahshua will prepare the guests for the wedding banquet, as they are doing now in their mortal bodies, and will continue to help prepare the guests after the bride changes into their glorified bodies, and will warn the guests not to take the mark of the beast, and to help protect them both in the physical realm and the spiritual realm. How many of you reading or hearing this know I, Yahweh, and my son Yahshua have spoken forth the truth in audible words, prophecies, dreams, visions, and anointed teachings from my Jewish apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomiah, and you have willingly closed your ears and stopped supporting this ministry so you won't be offended and have to admit you have sinned? How many of you have stayed in churches of Babylon for convenience sake? How many of you have mixed the old wine and the new wine and wonder why at first? Why the pastors of other churches won't receive these truths when you have confronted them. If you don't repent, you are the guest, or worse, the lukewarm church that I shall vomit out of my mouth. I, Yahweh, have used this ministry to test the people as in Jeremiah 6, 27 to 30. How few have listened until the missiles hit. The people will mock, but afterwards they will pray for mercy, protection, and provisions and come to this ministry for answers. Some I shall have mercy on, and some I shall not. The widow of Zarephath would have died if she had not obeyed Elijah of old. I send my apostles and prophets to warn, and yet how few will listen or join with them in obedience, repentance, prayer, and praise that I, Yahweh, will spare all those that humble themselves and ask that judgment be delayed for the sake of reaching more lost souls. 
This time of season is all about greed and selfishness, and I showed you greed and selfishness even in the dream that I gave my handmaiden Elizabeth and what the end results will be. I have told her to blow the trumpet and assemble the troops on the wall. How many of you are deaf to that trumpet? How many will read this and take your places on that wall? I, Yahweh, promise you, my beloved daughter, and all others who join with you in the truth I have taught you that line up with my holy scriptures. Wherever you live, my daughter, wherever the faithful children of mine are that take this warning and other warnings I have spoken forth from you seriously, and pray and intercede for America, and obey me in holiness and follow in Yahweh's footsteps, one step at a time, I, Yahweh, will bless them and protect them. Whoever joined with you in that dream and recognizes that I have called you to be a watchman on the wall and anointed you to assemble my troops, help to prepare the bride for my son Yahshua's coming, and bless you and not curse you, to do what they normally don't do, that is to be a blessing to this ministry. I shall bless and protect and provide for them as together you join hands and pray for judgment to be de delayed on America as it cannot be stopped. Otherwise I, Yahweh, will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah among others I have destroyed for sinfulness and idolatry. I, Yahweh, warn all the men who will despise and mock this morning because it comes from the mouth of a woman. Need I remind you how I used Deborah of old? The troops on the wall are mighty women of Yahweh, and they outnumber the men. I use the women to shame the men like I did Barak. Only I, Yahweh, know what it will take to cause the men to be my spiritual leaders and not the followers, my mighty women warriors that have husbands in the eyes of this world, that insist on being followers of the churches of Babylon who teach lies and follow after the flesh and not the Holy Spirit, not leaders of truth and holiness will be brought to open shame. I don't tell the women who I have anointed, like in the book of Joel 2, 25-28, to disobey my commandments, even if it is the woman's husband saying to submit to him. The instruction to the wife that says, Wives, submit yourself to your husbands in everything, is not meant for those that are unequally yoked with unbelievers. My word has been twisted to force a woman to conform into a heathen's image when it is used by a heathen husband. I use my daughter now to speak forth this truth, so it will set you free. Multitudes of women are struggling with this, but the truth is you chose that mate with your flesh, and husbands who have mates that reject holiness and the salvation of Yahshua, you chose that wife. For I did not and would not yoke a believer and a non-believer, a Yahshua, together. But I will allow you and did allow you to make the choices. I put you in remembrance of Nehemiah and Ezra. Note Ezra 9, 1-4. Note Nehemiah 13, 23-30. The Jews were not allowed to take heathens for a wife. My children grafted into the branch of Yahshua, although you may not be Jewish biologically, Spiritually, you are just as much as a Jew. These Hebrew laws apply to you also. If a husband is not following Yahweh on Yahshua in holiness and truth and insisting that the wife disobey the Torah, which includes all Ten Commandments, and hinder my anointed women from putting Yahweh on Yahshua's will first in their lives, I, Yahweh, do not call these marriages equally yoked, and I, Yahweh, will divide a marriage where a man refuses to allow the wife or the husband to be all I have called and chosen them to be. I will do what the husband or wife has prayed unceasingly and in faith for. If they are obedient and holy, I will not allow anything nor anyone to come between I, Yahweh, Father and Creator, and Yahshua, the Messiah, for a husband or wife is not interfering with the way a husband or wife worships their Creator and Messiah in truth and obedience and has an open mind to salvation. I will have more tolerance and patience with him or her. The wife shall still be like unto a Deborah of old, and I shall use her mightily as she intercedes for her husband as long as he does not harm her in any way nor forbid her from obeying my commands and the calling I, Yahweh, have placed on her life. I speak forth 
Together you shall do spiritual warfare to pray and intercede for the nations and people of all races, kindreds, and tongues to accomplish that which I have sent you forth with a reminder that many are called and few are chosen, depending on how much you want to grow spiritually. Herein lies your choices. Will you love and obey the ways of this world? Or will you obey me, Yahweh, and my son, Yahshua? It is your choice. Before the foundations of this world, I, Yahweh, already knew whose name is found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Second Chronicles 7, 13, 14. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Ezra 8, 21, 23. Then I proclaim a fast there at the rivers of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God, to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God Yahweh is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God Yahweh for this, and he was entreated of us. Joel 2. Please read all of Joel 2. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of Yahweh, your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, Yahweh, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Please contact me and let me know the work we do in warning is not in vain. Offending some, enlightening others. In the name of Yahshua. Apostle Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya, given to me on 12-8-2002. Please don't stone the messenger.